Nermo. Khabib and Nermega Manoff. Yeah, you said that would be your toughest fight? Yeah, just because just he's annoying. He comes forward with a lot of wrestling, a lot of pressure. Um, most people can't wrestle at that pace mm-hmm. for that long period of time. Mm-hmm. He's very persistent on taking you down. So you can't, oh, I just stop the shot and make him stand on his feet. What happens when he shoots 30 shots, mm. 10 around? You know, he's not going to get tired doing that. And once he gets in the top position, that's his best position. So he's going to fight to get to that position. Over, like when I fought Damian Maya. Damian Maya knew that his only chance was on the ground. So even though he was getting pieced up and he couldn't take me down, he had to keep trying because there was no chance he was going to outstrike me. So Khabib is a better version of his takedowns and his you know wrestling is mm-hmm. at, at a higher level. I think I'll beat him, but it, it will be the hardest fight. Okay. Is that going to happen? Uh, I mean, he, he has a hard time making 155, you know, so – that's the weight class below me. You know, I never outweigh it. But if it happened, that's a big fight for me. Like he got, a, he got a big following. You know, I'll take him out, and you know, I'll get, I'll get the money I deserve for the fight. Before we go, they, Verdum went after Mark Hunt because Mark Hunt was what? very unkind to Verdum on on, on Instagram. Yeah. And Mark Hunt responded. What did, what did he say? Uh, what did uh, Verdum oh, say? Start with the whole thing. Well, you yeah. know, Verdum got popped for two years. So that's probably it for him. Oh, you weren't here last week. Oh, yeah, he's out for two years. Oh. He got popped, and uh, Mark Hunt made some comments on our show and then uh, I think on uh, social media. Yeah, I mean, Mark Hunt hates... Hates them. Cheaters more than yeah. anything. Loves so, the term yeah. rat fuck, right? Oh, yeah, yeah he well, did that's, say rat fuck. That's, that's what he says here, yeah. <laughs> what did he say about that? What did he say? Was, uh, he said, Daddy, what was his first? S- yeah, so Verdum put out a thing on Instagram. No, you have it. Uh, Verdum right. put out a thing that said, uh, You're not following Daddy on Instagram. When Daddy sees you, I'm going to knock you out again, which he's saying to Mark Hunt. And Mark Hunt wrote back, Daddy doesn't have a job anymore because Daddy <laughs> sticks needles in his stupid ass. <laughs> Enjoy working at the petrol station, you rat fuck. <laughs> Dude, he's, he's very Mark hey, Hunt. Mark Hunt is totally correct. Uh, if I fought uh, guys and then they got it, it, it was they got caught later on, it's like, dude, really? Fuck you. I don't good. I'm with Mark Hunt on that. Me too. And I and, and you know I love fucking Verdun watching Verdun. Who gets more excited to watch a Verdun fight than me, Jimmy? I would say no one. Anyway, I wanted to talk about C.B. Dalloway's fight. He took on some Russian, I forget the guy's name. Um, and there was a big uproar on Twitter about it. I don't know if we can pull this up. Probably can't. But uh, basically what happened, C.B. was doing well in the fight. He was taking people down. He was doing uh, taking his opponent down, pardon me. And in the second round, you know, it kind of went back and forth. And then C.B. just kind of quit. He, he just kind of gave up. I don't know if he was hurt. I don't know if he was gassed. I don't know what it was. But... Towards mid part of the second round, he just led on the floor in the fetal position and covered up like a little baby, right? Just Mm. wanting the fight to be finished. And the opponent continued beating on him for about two minutes straight. I mean, and CB wasn't doing anything. He wasn't trying to get an underhook. He wasn't trying to block the punches. He was literally lying face down on the floor with his arms covered up. And I thought, wow, well, this is all for Jesus Christ. Herb, Herb, stop the fight. Herb. Stop the fight, and I don't know what it is, but Herb Dean seems to be, uh, you know, letting this happen a lot lately. And um, he didn't cover up, but that's not an intelligent defense. Staring mm. at the floor with your hands like this, right, is not an intelligent defense. Some fight, uh, some referees will say you got to improve your position, you know. Um, but that's not an intelligent defense. An intelligent defense is trying to maybe tie an arm up. You know, get half guard and tie, get an overhook so the guy can't punch you as much. Uh, lying face down on the floor with your hand, with your guard up is not an intelligent defense. And you're right. It does vary from referee to referee. 
Um, you know, and as you mentioned, every referee comes into the locker room beforehand and they give you what they're looking for. And some will say you need to improve position. Big John MacArthur, he's very good at that. Well, he used to be when he refereed. He he would be very clear what he was looking for. When he says, I need you to fight back, he'll say, that doesn't mean um, just cover up or defend yourself. It means improve your position, get back to your feet, escape the position. If you're in full mount, maybe get half guard back. You've got to show the referee that you still want to be in the fight. And I'm sorry, but lying face down on the floor with your guard up, that doesn't. And, you know, CB could have been really hurt yeah. there. He could have been really hurt. The point where he turns, where he's belly down, not doing anything, that's the moment where it should have been stopped. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I I'm watching it. I'm watching it really closely. Wow. Yeah, and, and he just keeps getting teed off on, you know. And he, he, he could get hurt. I mean, I like CB. It was a shame. I thought he'd win that fight. Steve, CB's very talented, but, you know, Whoa. he's another guy. He's been around for a while. I, when I, I, talk, I talk to the guy, they, they um, potentially might want me to fight or something, so I just need to get, I got an MRI on my thumb, I'm sitting there for a second opinion, and um, if, if I'm if I'm good, then I have no issue with fighting in November, so the more I fight, the better rhythm I get, the swing of things, so uh, obviously I just fought, I'm still in phenomenal shape, even though I've been eating, you know, pancakes, shrimp fried rice, and um, brownies. Um, I think taking a week, taking a week, and eating some bull crap, um, I still can jump back in the training camp and feel good. So it, it, it all just depends on how severe my thought injury really was. I dislocated in the first round to a punch, hit him in the back of the head. I thought it was just jammed, and if it's something, you know, something a little bit more severe, then they might perform a small surgery on it and it's see me out for, you know, two months. If they think we can do something different, maybe I take the stem cell PRP route, then I only have to be down for like half the time. So it really depends on that. Like I would love to fight Madison Square Garden in the game. To be honest, not to sound, you know, arrogant, but there's certain opponents that I would never take. I would never take a fight against Darren Till with not 100% confidence in both of my hands. But there are a few guys that I think I can beat, even if my hands are a little jacked up. I think we understand where you're headed with that. Uh, yeah. Because I think Dana's been pretty obvious that he, he where he's headed is Colby Covington. So is that kind of what you were implying? I mean, think about it. I was going to fight Nate Diaz with a torn labor. He's not going to try to wrestle me. It's not going to be a very static fight. It was going to be a striking fight. And I know how to throw straight punches. And I can think I punch harder. And I think I punch faster. So I, I was going to accept that fight and get the labor and surgery afterwards. Now fighting the RDA or fighting the Colby Covington or fighting the Usman wrestlers, with a labrum tear be idiotic. Anytime I underhook or pull or uh, my shoulder game in jeopardizing spot, I, I won't be able to defend myself properly. I just didn't see Nate um, posing that threat to me. Um, Kobe Covington is a guy that, you know, let's be real, you know, he's not the best striker on the division. He's a great pressure fighter. Um, his fight is more based on wrestling and more based on conditioning. And when you think about us as just wrestlers, if we put the gloves down and we just wrestle, he's going to get schooled by me. He's just wrestle. And he's gotten schooled by me many, many times. I don't know where this great sense of amnesia happened. got my big daddy there there you go. Don't, you, don't you ever leave my sight again you hear me <laughs> you hear me there you go, man. I missed you I missed her <laughs> and I appreciate it bro. no problem bro appreciate anytime thank man. you guys for having me no problem, really bro. thank you here it is there it is right there got my belt back Uh, now with the speculation that John Jones might be returning at UFC 230, I know you talked about this a little bit earlier this week, but I'm wondering if you guys were to be on the same card, how would that go? What would take place if you guys crossed paths? I'd fucking double leg that little fucking twig and put him on his head, dude. His little, his legs are like, like maybe five or 10 pounds. He's got little skinny stick figure legs. So he knows what's up. We used to wrestle back in the day, Iowa Central when we were roommates. So 
if we came in path, dude, I'll put him on his head, bro. He ain't shit to me. Without the juice, he ain't nothing. Dude, yeah, he was Superman on the juice, but without the juice, it's a whole nother level, a whole nother game. So he knows he can't keep up with my pace. He knows that deep down inside. Okay.